free play. I don't know what to talk about. I don't even probably actually. I what it is is I don't feel like I have anything to talk about, and that's usually when I'll talk about things. So I figured I'd record it. Today is Friday. I have bits and pieces to work on, but for the most part, I've been keeping it pretty chill. I'm happy about that. Uh, oh, I wonder if I can see this. Ooh, I can. Cool. So, uh, I've been playing Pokemans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had, uh, played... What was it? Pokemon Blue. Pokemon Blue. That's actually the only Pokemon that I played. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Pokemon Blue, when it first came out, I had, uh, well, I wanted to be the very best, like no one ever was. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that game. It was a really good game. That was in uh, early in high school, I think. I might be getting my years wrong. No, I, yeah, no. Well, that was when I played it, at least. It might have come out before that. Anyways, it's, it's weird and wild and uh, pretty cool, I guess, to have uh, my kids like the stuff that I liked. Now, I'm aware that this is very... Um, mm, targeted marketing, the nostalgia marketing, but it isn't necessarily that. I mean, I wasn't like, don't you like this? I, like, you know, I'm not buying her Nirvana t-shirts or anything, but what she is getting is, uh, the Pokemon shows, the, the animated show on Netflix, and she liked it. He kept watching more and watching more and watching more and <laughs> it was kind of neat to relive some of that I don't watch much TV but it's cool to be able to share something like that that's really something um, oh man I'll never forget I, I, yeah I, I will never forget we were in uh, we were on vacation in California uh, visiting family and we were watching the show and it was the episode where Ash thinks Pikachu would be happier living with all the other, living with, living amongst the other Pikachu. And uh, he says, go on, get, I don't even love you anymore. And he runs away crying. And my daughter lost it. I think we have a picture of me holding her. She's, she was on the bed watching the show and she stood up like, oh, is this happening? And she lost it. Oh. My goodness. This is the cutest damn thing. <laughs> uh. But what is in there is, you know, it, it's kids, kids shows, it's kids viewing, it's, uh, it's instructional stuff even. There's a lot of stuff that, once you start breaking down <clears throat> symbolism and artistic choices and stuff like that, you can really pick out nasty ideas. Pokemon, at least to my eyes, my critical eye, which might be somewhat, uh, somewhat lacking just because of the nostalgia factor, well, still pretty critical, I think. Pokemon comes out looking pretty good. There are also many instances where we um, remind her of proper behavior or of appropriate behavior in situations by reminding her of shows. You know, remember when this happened to this character and what did they do? Did they quit? Uh, did they get frustrated and angry? Did they fight other people? You know, it's a it's a instruct instructive. 
instructional? <laughs> Informational? I, I'm not even, I'm groping for words right now. You know what I mean. But, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I am very aware that it is a, uh, the cartoon show is a, it is a, it is a commercial. The car, the show is the commercial. Uh, it is meant to get you to purchase more of these products. And the products, so far, have been... I think it's a couple Pikachu, like a Pikachu animal, there's a Charmander animal, like plushy kind of thing, and then one video game. So, there might be a couple more things. Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm pretty anti-consumerist anyways, so I try to keep everything pretty low. I'm of the opinion that the kids have too many toys and if you cut them in half, they'd be happier, actually. It's uh, something I'd like to put to the test. <laughs> but they do a pretty good job of managing things, so. It's, it's cool to kind of relive the nostalgia. And not only that, but to even to play the old... Um, I got a SNES, the Nintendo, the tiny SNES retro console for my birthday uh, a couple months back, and <clears throat> I was playing Legend of Zelda uh, Link to the Past. I've never played it before, and I just got into the, the Dark World, and it's like, this is a whole nother game. Like, I was, I was getting a little disappointed because I was gonna, I thought I was about to finish it. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna finish This can't be over. No. And then the whole dark world open up and, uh, you know, it was six or seven new princesses and stuff like that. And the maidens that have to save. Like, awesome. Yes. Keep going. <laughs> That's really cool. It's a really cool moment. Oh, and while I'm playing it, you know, my, my daughter and my son are watching it. My daughter's getting all excited because you start out trying to save the princess and rescuing her, actually, from the castle. And... <laughs> She's like jumping up and down, literally excited about what's happening. And, you know, we're, go we're coming off of uh, uh, Breath of the Wild here. You know, I don't even know what console generation, current, gen current year, current year generation console uh, with the Switch. And, you know, all that that entails, all of the open world aspects. And now Link is like, Link is like 32 pixels. He's like 32 blocks of color, <laughs> and she's just as excited. And that's really, that's magical. It is, it is really amazing that we can take this kind of uh, the storytelling and this kind of, um, let's see, I'm not sure what you would call it, the, just the experience, uh, the experience of the game and moving your moving yourself through it. It's also pretty hard, which is actually. You know, the, some of the later levels, I got like three things trying to kill me that just keep coming back and like constant fireballs shooting at me as I'm moving through some of these dungeon rooms. And I'm, I'm starting to get frustrated. I'm like, man, like I, I have been, uh, I've been coddled by modern games being so simplistic and undifficult. But it's still a lot of fun. Yes, the 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 Pokemans. So playing the Pokemans and uh, so there, there's a trick actually to playing the the new Pokemon game, the Pokemon um, Let's Go. And so my daughter got the My daughter got the Let's Go Eevee version, and, um, yeah, uh, I had watched a video on it, you know, to kind of see what it was like or what it was about, and a lot of people complained that it was too easy, uh, they complained that you can't, uh, you don't weaken Pokemon, um, before you capture them, you don't battle them before you, you capture them, <clears throat> and all of those are valid complaints, um, but one of the, the guy also had a suggestion, and his suggestion was take, basic, he basically said that your, your, uh, 
your primary Pokemon that you get, your Eevee or your Let's Go Pikachu, Pikachu, uh, is OP. And it's just always going to be overpowered because you wind up with them getting the most experience. Uh, he thinks they're they're a little bit more buffed uh, because they do have kind of special characteristics that other ones don't have. So his solution to that was remove it from your lineup. Remove it from your six Pokemon lineup. And uh, I did just that. And sure enough, last time I played, I lost. I lost a battle to Misty that I just kind of kept going at it. It's Staryu's a tank, man. Staryu's OP. <laughs> and I remembered, uh, I remembered playing her before and that, that kind of carried through from Pokemon Blue because Staryu was a tank. It was rough. <laughs> and uh, Staryu had this other, uh, he had a TM called Scald and it one-shotted my Pikachu. It was ridiculous. I was, it was really cool when a game gets me to drop my mouth. <laughs> I like start, that was my second time going up against Misty and I beat uh, Psyduck. And then I put up, well, Psyduck was a surprise too. And then I put up uh, Pikachu, you know, electric type against the water type. And then Pikachu pops up there, and then Staryu does a scald and one shots him. And I'm just like, uh, what? <laughs> it was good. It was really good. I love being surprised. I love hard stuff, difficult things. It's good. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I did eventually meet Misty. <laughs> the Bellsprout. Bellsprout's uh, coming up in my lineup. I'll do a live stream. <laughs> That's just, it's cool. You know, the, the nostalgia's there. I'm actually being challenged by the game instead of just like s sleeping my way through it. Uh, the other game, the other thing about this Pokemon game is the. Um, the Pokemon game that she was playing before was a free-to-play one that has, you know, uh, pay elements for continued play. You, you run out of your free play, basically. And it's, uh, what is it called? Pokemon Quest, I think? And it has these simplified Pokemon, and it auto-battles. You literally can walk away from the game, and it will, it will play itself. You select the map to start, and you can either control it or walk away, and it'll just play. Which is utterly ridiculous. So, I'm happy to get her into a Pokemon game, which she likes. You know, she loves the Pokemons. She loves the Pokemans. And now she can actually play it as if it were an actual game that people, you know, interact with. Instead of a, you know, you know cinematic experience. Whatever the hell that means. I've been doing a lot of cursing lately. I apologize. I'll clean this up. <sighs> yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. I like it. And I have things I need to get done. <clears throat> and um, like I said, I'm chill. I'm, I'm even. I'm straight. I'm good. I don't... Uh... I'm okay with this. It's pretty cool. Uh, I have actually, since I switched notebooks to that tiny notebook, I believe I've come up with a solution to, uh, a <laughs> it's a royal rainbow solution, a solution to the uh, keyboard, to the signum with tenting angles so that you can make it straight or adjust the angles on it. Uh, and I think, I mean, you can always make a solution, but you can't really, can't always make an aesthetic solution, or a solution that really fits the, uh, um, fits the model and fits the overall design goals for the Signum. So this should be something that's relatively simple to add on. Uh, it'll actually enable a number of, uh, options in the split halves, and <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be a rainbow ribbon cable. Uh, or, you know, the standard gray with a purple indicator for pin one. It's the uh, 2x5 pin. And it'll connect to a... Or rather, it will... 
circle around a post, a rotation point, in the top right and left corners for the halves. That way you can push it up and have them lined up straight perpendicular, and then you can slide them down. Uh, so using that cable with that corner rotation point doesn't create any binding. I had been trying to figure out how to do this, and I was like, bruh, you already did this with the, uh, with the Pleco. Like, why not just recreate that? And once I did that, it was, it was easy. Uh, so, there's probably going to be some perpendicular board soldering, which is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, but the cable should run across it, no problem. And uh, if I do it correctly, and lay it out correctly, the spacing should work just fine so the cables are more or less taut, you know, I'm not going to have excess cable flopping around there. Standard sizing for those uh, 2 by 5 ribbon cables is um, 6 inches, so it's pretty easy to do. Pretty excited for it. It's going to be a, it's probably going to be a Signum 4. I can't, it's not going to be compatible with the Signum 3. It's not, it's not going to be possible. Plus the build is going to be completely different. So, I mean, it'll have a, a separate base and the base will house, you know, basically the MCU and the mount points. And then the halves will sit on top of that. And then you'll be able to kind of snap things together. <laughs> There's a little Pokemon fiend herself. <laughs> All right, later guys.